plaintiff, Tom Heil, dated the defendant. But one day, out of the blue, she said she didn't want to have sex anymore, and she only wanted to be friends. Tom suspects an old fling came back into the defendant's life, and he's suing today for the value of a Jeep and tires. Defendant Joyce Bukowski says Tom was extremely possessive, and the reason she stopped having sex with him was because the sex wasn't good. Joyce denies owing Tom for anything. Start with you. Yes, Your Honor. We met through a mutual friend, and, um, you know, we started dating. Um, well, she, I respected her wishes. She didn't want to have sex right away, so I just respected her wishes. And then, like on our second date, we started having sex, getting along. Well, how long after the first was the second? About a couple of weeks. Okay. And um, we were having a good time. Things were going great. And then uh, we went to uh, a fair in Indiana. And I bought her a few things at the fair and a few things at other places. And at that night after the fair, we, um, she came to a or she decided not to have a sexual relationship anymore, and she just wanted to be friends. Why do you think that was? Did you ask, and what did she say? Well, I didn't really ask, but I kind of had a feeling it might have been from an old boyfriend. He and came I, back, you believe? In her, in her life. And I says, well, I don't want to be just friends. And um, I says, I wish you would have told me this before I spent this money on you at the <laughs> fair, because I wouldn't have never done it. And, uh, what did you spend at the fair? A hundred dollars? A couple hundred bucks. Okay. Good. So, so we, after you spent your money that same day? The same day. Defendant Joyce Bukowski admits that she had a sexual relationship with a plaintiff, but she claims she cut it off because the sex wasn't good. Ma'am, why don't you give me some uh, testimony on the relationship, if you like? Yeah, we, you know, we dated, did have sexual relations. Honestly, it wasn't that great. <laughs> How was she? <laughs> she was kind of wild. She, I thought she enjoyed it by bringing the word of God into the situation, oh. by saying, oh God, oh God. And I thought it was pretty good there for a no, while. She was praying, sir. Yeah. <laughs> she, was, uh, no. she was praying that it got better. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. And it didn't, no. so she told you she's done. I'm messing with both of y'all. That was that was a good one. <laughs> but, but you started it. Go I ahead. Know, and then I ended it. I told you all when these personal insults come, I have to step in and end it. But go ahead. You all were uh, involved with each other. And then what happened? Um. I happened to notice that he became very possessive of having to know where I was, you know, what I was doing, uh, you know, if I didn't return his calls or texts, you know, at a you know suitable time for him, he would get very upset with me, and you know, and it's not true, Your Honor. And you know, oh, you want, thought she was cheating? Go ahead. And want to know, and you know, and that's the response of a person who thinks that why I didn't return his calls and this and that. And why you know. didn't you? Well, yeah, for example, there was one day I told him I had a doctor's appointment and had a busy day. You know, during that day when I went, I had went to the doctor, I had turned the volume off on my phone. And when I left the doctor's, I, you know, per, it was in my purse. I didn't think about my phone. I just went to go do the errands I needed to do that day. And you know, when I got done, I went to his place and he jumped all over me because I hadn't returned any of my calls or texts to him that day, which I didn't even realize he had even called because my the volume was off of my phone because I had been at the, the doctor's office that day. Yeah. Is, yeah. And that was the extent of the accusations. Anything about the relationship as it relates to him? Well, I had left one day at my house and... Uh, when I came back home, I had been gone all day long, and I came back home, my neighbor had come up to me and uh, said that he had been there and that he had been knocking on the windows 
of my house and was, you know, like. He had? Yeah. Uh, okay, go ahead. You know, and she thought that was a bit bizarre, you know, that, you know, he, he just didn't knock on the door and leave because he didn't get an answer. He started knocking on mm -hmm. the windows, you know, like I was there and I wasn't. I was at a friend's house all day. <laughs> And she, she thought it was bizarre that he had just knocked, it, you know, was knocking on the windows. Yeah, ain't no bizarre. You should have told her. He thinks I'm cheating on him. Go he ahead, He never accused sir. me of it. Go ahead. Uh, the value of a car yes, and tires. Honey. Tell me. Um, there was one day she wanted to buy a Jeep, and her, fa her father was going to give her anywhere between three and $6,000 to purchase this Jeep. So I took her out that day to look at Jeeps. We looked at four to five Jeeps. Actually, we only found one that was a nice enough for her father to approve. So um, she showed her father a bunch of Jeeps on the phone through the Internet. And um, he didn't like them. They were too jacked up. And uh, so this one that we looked at was the one that he would approve on. So I tried to call her to let her know that the lady called me because she had two other people interested in the Jeep and they were going camping for that weekend. And she never answered the phone, so I got a hold of my friend here, Jim, to take me to go get the Jeep because her father was going to give her three. So what happened, 000. sir? You went and picked it up and we then We went what? and picked it up. We brought it back. And she said that her father will give her the money on Father's Day, but her brother got in an argument with her father, so she didn't ask the father for the money. She said she'd go back and ask him later, and that's where it ended. When was that? That was in, that was in June. Okay. June of nineteen. Right. You sure you weren't mixing that up, sir? You were bragging about your performance. You sure she, you wasn't the daddy she was talking about? Yeah, I, I wasn't. <laughs> she didn't that, have I wasn't calling that daddy, daddy body in. Maybe that's the well, daddy her, she was She talking mentioned about. her father being worth over $5 million, and there was no problem in getting the money, and I would get paid for that money. Yeah. And then we went to get the tires, and she applied for a uh, discount tire credit card that she got denied on. And they already had two tires off of her car. Okay. When they... Last conversation about getting your money. What has she said? She said she was going to get it from her father. When was that? That was... That was probably in July. All right. Defendant Joyce Bukowski admits that she had a sexual relationship with the plaintiff. But she claims she cut it off because the sex wasn't good. Ma'am, what do you want to say about this? I never said no such thing. I said my dad was helping me in trying to find a vehicle for me, you know, and when he brought that Jeep to my house, he knew I didn't have the money right then and there. And he told me, he says, don't worry about it. Did you ask your father to help out with that Jeep? No, Why? not. Why? I, you know, like I said, that my, my dad, there was no such because thing he could believe as me. he does that it was that was the case, or he has reason to believe it was false pretense that you had him buy that. He he probably no. from I, what I, I just heard, ma'am, I wouldn't have purchased you a jeep unless I believed that your father was helping. That is what would have closed the deal for me. I never and asked. And you told him, him that. I never asked him to buy that vehicle for me. You know, he, she never he, asked he, you to help with the vehicle. Yes, she did, Your Honor. And she no, I did not. That her father would give her anywhere between three and six thousand yeah. dollars towards that Jeep. And I do have a I, witness that heard her say that. Come on up, sir. State your name. James Shaw. What'd you hear? Well, I was at Tommy's house. He was working on the Jeep, putting the uh, shocks on it that mm -hmm. he didn't mention. And I, her and I had talked and. She said that she really appreciated Tommy getting her to the Jeep and that she was going to do everything in her power to get the money back for her dad. When was that? Um, June, July, August? Around July. Yeah. All right. Ma'am, do you remember talking with him about the Jeep at all? Oh, Never? Sir. He's made that entire no. scenario up? Yeah. All right. And I mean, he was, yeah, he was there when he, those shots were being put on the Jeep, but I never said anything along those lines to him. Okay. You all never discussed the Jeep at all? No. You sat there and watched the Jeep being repaired, but you never even mentioned the Jeep. 
Not uh, one time. Oh, did I was you helping mention. out by handing tools. Then I mean, I wasn't just sitting there. No, you said you never even discussed the Jeep, ma'am. You act like yeah. the Jeep was well, irrelevant to, him, to no, you all I never standing discussed there. The Jeep you act like him. the Jeep was irrelevant to you all being there together. Um, they're convincing me more than you are. And when there's not evidence to prove who's right or wrong, then I have to go with who I believe is more likely telling the truth. What do you have? Your Honor, she also gave me- Do you have any evidence? She also gave me $50 towards the tires. Let's see it. Ma'am, did you? <laughs> did you? I don't remember. It came from her maintenance check from her ex-husband. Okay, you did, ma'am. Ma'am, you're not being honest I, today. I, I've your never father, talked you told to him me your about father the, agreed to help. Anything. Why would he buy it if you didn't discuss your father helping? You admitted to discussing your father helping. You told him your father was going to help. Otherwise, I doubt if he would, went, would have purchased that car, as he says today. He shows me evidence where you did pay something toward it. $2,282 is your judgment. Thank I believe you, you. Have a good day. You're